Good morning, dear brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Hello, good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, and please read along with me in the scriptures we will be considering today. Read along with me because I'm fallible, and I make mistakes. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word, authorized version, word of God, the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God. This is what is perfect. Okay? Today is the 18th. And uh, before we get started, I want to, I'm going to uh, mention this, and what our video is going to be about today that we are going to look upon. <laughs> I called on the name of the Lord a thousand times, and I never had a shirt. <clears throat> there are those of you who uh, know who I was just mocking there. Um, that was a... a sad individual who has a disability, but he is one of those dark implants. Someone who knowingly is doing evil, but when they do what is evil, they quickly run and hide behind their disability to justify it. Okay? I call those dark implants. Okay? Uh, any questions about that, uh, please, please check the description box on the dark implants. Okay? Someone who knowingly does contrary to the scripture, knowingly does evil, and then once they are discovered, they quickly revert back as well. I have a disability. Ah, you're hiding behind that to do evil. Okay? But, anyway, about that, and I, I'm sorry, but to prove the point, calling upon the name of the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord. Now unto these stupid, disgusting, free grace, antinomianist, uh, easy believers, believe and receive, pond scum, <coughs> devils, um, to them, calling upon the name of the Lord is a work. They'll do anything to justify themselves. Okay? And we are going to go over this thoroughly today. Okay? So this is... We got a lot of stuff we're going to be going over, but that is what we're going to be addressing: this calling upon the name of the Lord. And we're going to address your cute little, your little cutie pie, your little sweetheart. You know, well, what if they can't call? Huh? How we're going to address that today? All right. So, with no further ado, let us begin in Proverbs 18, the first two verses. Through desire. What desire? Oh, keep reading. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. Now, in Scripture, wisdom is equated with the fear of the Lord. And understanding is departing from evil. There are variations within that, but... Context gives you the definition thereof. But in the general sense and purpose of the uses of the word, you are, uh, you are not in error and you are safe when you say wisdom is the fear of the Lord and departing from evil is understanding. But see right here, through desire. What kind of desire? What kind of, there are types of desire. There's a desire that's gravi that gravitates to this. And there is a desire to serve he whom has saved you, if in fact you are saved and have gone the way that he has elected, the way of the cross, which is number one, death to self. Death to self, which not one easy believest heretic has ever gone through. What does that mean? Broken of self-righteousness. Okay? But... 
It says here, seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom. Well, why can't I be a Christian and a Buddhist? Why can't I be a Christian and a Taoist? Huh? Number one, if you're saved, you're not a Christian. Okay? If you're saved, you, you're not a Christian. There are some saints out there who want to still, I don't know what it is with you, but hey, that's between you and the Lord. Uh, you still want to call yourself that. That I don't know why, but that's like I said. That's between you and the Lord. But intermittent with all wisdom. All wisdom. There's only two wisdoms. For this, you go to James chapter 3. Remember that, brother. Whenever you come to it, remember, there are only two wisdoms. There are only two. There are only two wisdoms. Okay? James chapter 3. James chapter 3. And of course, the pages are going to stick together. James chapter 3, verses 11 on to verse 18. Here are the two wisdoms. This is the best place to go to show this. And it's in the book of James, a book within the New Testament that is doctrinally written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, prove that to you. Okay. Uh, uh, James 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Twelve tribes. Uh, the twelve tribes. Twelve tribes of Israel which will be uh, more focused on upon in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And then, of course, you got James 2, which is um, shows you faith and works. But the, the, See, that's what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth, son. Okay? So that will be in the description box. But let's continue. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and phrase? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Well, what kind of wisdom? Okay. And you see, knowledge and wisdom. Different things. But, okay, here's the, here they are. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. And see, an easy believist or an adherent thereof of easy believism in whatever denomination of Christianity they abide in, okay, envy, strife in your hearts. Envy. You want to be your own God. You don't want God telling you what to do. Strife. I'm saved because I, 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 I. Okay? That's how that works with those devils. Okay? This wisdom, what wisdom? What envy? Envying and strife. Envying and strife. Satan wants to be God. I will be like the Most High. See, you're an easy believist. You save yourself by your own belief and your faith is in your faith. Okay? That's how that works. Okay? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You, you and your stupid, ridiculous Roman Catholic ecumenical doctrine has been thoroughly and thoroughly refuted. Okay? Anyway, this wisdom, wisdom of what? Flesh, which is in envy, strife. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly. Man's body, mankind, our body had its inception from what? We're dirt, people. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Uh, uh, what does that say in uh, Genesis 3? From dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Okay, eventually the corpse will turn to dirt again. Okay, that's how that works. Okay, we didn't come from a sniveling piece of snot out of a body of water. Millions and billions. Of, you, you, you got rocks in your brains if you really believe that. I'm, I'm not going to be nice about that. Time is short, especially mine. Okay, this wisdom descendeth not from above. It's not from God. 
but is earthly, made of dirt, flesh, sensual, led by the senses. Well, well God knows my heart. I feel in my heart. <laughs> senses. Led by the five senses, you know. Five, the number of death. Devilish. And you read your old place there, and we'll go to uh, uh, Matthew 16. What are you doing? What are you doing? Matthew 16? Matthew 16. Uh, hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. I'm trying to. Do, sometimes I run out of fingers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Just bear with me, saints. And those of you, my enemies, who. Uh, uh, Matthew 16. 23, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, the accuser of the brethren. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. How do they do that? This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil word. Envying. You antinomianist pan scum. And all you devils that teach that nonsense. You don't want God telling you what to do. You don't. You are the captain of your own destiny. You decide your own course. So, envy. You want to be your own God. Strife. You are saved by what you do, work salvation, your own belief, and your faith is in your faith. Uh, that has been truly <coughs> proven. That is what you guys believe. That is what you guys who teach this nonsense, that is what you teach. And you shall know them by their fruits. Look at some of these people who preach this nonsense. I rest my case. Okay? And it's confusion. God's not the author of confusion. Verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above, from God, is first what? Pure. Then peaceable. Gentle and easy to be entreated. Full of mercy and good fruits. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. Yes, the fear of the Lord is with... The fear of the Lord is without partiality and without hypocrisy. Uh, this is what some devils need to, and they do, they just do this to get attention. Uh, hey, there, bloop, you ain't a hypocrite, huh? Oh, what, a, what, a, what it must be like to be such a perfect English creature. Yeah. Anyway, see, man is full of hypocrisy. Look at Peter. Oh, yeah, look at Peter. Look at Paul, Acts 21, okay? And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And that doesn't mean compromise. Okay? Now, go back to Psalm, uh, Proverbs 18, verse 2. Oh, you guys are going to love this part, especially when we're going to talk about, you know, what is a pure heart according to the Lord. Okay? You're going to love that. Verse 2. Now, through desire of man having separated himself. What desire is that? Verse 2. A fool. A fool. A fool says in his heart there is no God. Big G God. But see, they replace that big G God, anti, you know, to be against and replace. They replace it with themselves. See, that's what the free grace theology does, which infects all the denominations, even King James Bible, even Christianity. Uh, it infects all of that. It's, it's the worst heresy there is today, in my opinion. Okay? So, a fool hath no delight in understanding departing from evil. Now, now look at this. Okay? You see wisdom and understanding. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. And a fool hath no delight in understanding departing from evil. Just look at some of these free grace channels. Praise that he isn't. Uh, grace ambassadors on uh, 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 the Canadian talk show host. Uh, he's a little different, but he's 
still of the same caliber of these idiots. Uh, Elmer from New York, uh, you know. Elmer at least does attempt, does attempt, but he's more philosophical. He at least will attempt every once in a while to read a verse of scripture, but he's all about philosophy in him anyway. Okay, <laughs> all right. That's that's what these that's what these guys are about. Okay. A fool had no delight in understanding departing from evil. Free grace justifies sin. That's all it is. Free grace is freedom from God. And the grace that is given you is not the grace of God, but is Satan's grace. To go ahead and live in sin without conscience. Because, hey, I just saved myself by my own belief. That's, that's free grace. And again... $2,000 challenge for any of you. Freely by his grace, but verbatim, find me. Free grace. I'll give you $2,000 of money I don't have, dear friend. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Find it in scripture. Good luck. Anyway, if all have no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Hmm. His heart may discover itself. Genesis 6. Genesis 6. What does God have to say? Well, God is my heart. <laughs> People, Okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. Come here. Look at me. Okay. Look at me. If someone, you know, a Christian, I'm not a Christian. I'm a saint. Oh, you're a saint. Oh, sh sh shut up. You, shut up. Okay. Just sh shut up. In the description box, uh, the, a video about what a saint is scripturally. Dude. If someone, you know, claiming to be a Christian, utters to you the phrase, God knows my heart. Every single time, without an exception, at least not that I have encountered, it is always to justify themselves in an action that they know is contrary to God. Without exception, in every one that I have encountered. Okay, even the bloke said that. Well, God knows my heart. That's why I'm mocking when I say that. That guy, the other than myself, who I hate. Okay? But I've heard that from <laughs> the Methodists down there and several of you other brethren have encountered these. Well, God knows my heart. And see, they're doing that to justify themselves because they know that they did something God doesn't approve of. I have yet to meet speak with, converse with, correspondence with, mano y mano. I have yet to meet a saint in any capacity, a saint, not a Christian, who will revert to, God knows my heart. A saint will say that to, in order to say like, well, yeah, God does know my heart. Not to justify themselves, but Genesis 6, one verse, verse 5. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Mm. Mm. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. And one of the, one of the dumbest things is um, people nowadays, <laughs> and, they, and they, they do this, People nowadays, because because nowadays within Christianity, they think well, it's the it's the progressive mindset, it's the evolutionary mindset. It's like well, yeah, that's what man's heart used to be, but man's heart's getting better as we go. You you all smoking what Dave Murphy offers you? That that's 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 stupid. No, thermodynamics. Things get worse in times. Uh, in time. Okay, um, you look at today. You look in America. You look, look at America. All you outside the nation of America, look at America. And I, you know, are we getting better? Are we progressing? But no, we are getting worse. 
We are getting worse. Proverbs 28, verses 25 on to 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. You want to be your own God. Yeah, you don't want God telling you what to do. You have envy because you want to be your own God. You have strife because you don't want God telling you what to do. I'm saved because of my belief. My faith is in my faith. And you can put that into with the, the, the Catholics and their stupid, you know, the, the, the little bail cookie and, you know, and saying Hail Mary till they're a chartreuse in the face. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. Yeah. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. And of course, and of course, we we we, we do gotta go here. We we do gotta go here, dear brother. Yes, we do. Jeremiah seventeen. Well, that's changed today. No one oh, it has it. <laughs> has it. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Uh, you wait. You're right. It has changed today. Since then, you're right. It's gotten worse. Love is love. How many genders are there? God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. God loves you. It's gotten worse. So yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's gotten. Yeah, you're right. It has changed. It's gotten worse. The heart of man has gotten worse. Mankind. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 on 2, 11. Thank you, brother. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so is he that getteth riches and not by right. Riches and not by right. Just believe and receive. You got to go to Christ's church that he founded, meaning Rome. Uh, you're saved because of the, your skin color. Got to be there. Got to be at the fellas' house every time the door is open. Getting riches and not by right. Not the elect way of the cross, which is brokenness. And we could stop at that because that's something that you people don't want. I give credit to people, at least, like, again, that devil Dave Murphy. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Okay. Uh, he at least, you know, he's a wicked devil going to hell. But he at least, an atheist, so-called, no such thing. Anyway, he at least admitted publicly, yeah, I don't want Jesus. Yeah, I like my sin. Almost a verbatim quote. Almost. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, that is, okay. All right. <laughs> Not... Knock yourself out, man. Roll up another one. I can, I will at least give respect to someone. It's like, hey, at least you're up front with it, man. You're going to hell and you shut your mouth. You're going to pay for everything you did to blaspheme my father. But, hey, you're at least, unlike these other Christians, at least he's up front. Okay? Let's continue. Shall leave them in the midst of... Okay. As the partridge sitteth on eggs and hatcheth them not, so is he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end shall be a fool. Well, what is a fool? What is a fool, huh? Ah, what is a fool? Then never mind, you don't have to go to Webster's. You don't, you, don't, you don't go to what man said. What say the scripture? Psalm 53, also Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Capital G. But yet, they are their own God. Anti. See, the easy believism, antinomianist, Roman Catholic ecumenical doctrine is anti-Christ. Why? It's against the Christ of the Scripture because they're all, I haven't met one yet, they're all Trinitarians, and number two, replace, they are their own God, they are their own standard. They save themselves by their own belief, and they don't want the God of the Scriptures telling them what to do. Period. So, 
The fool has said in, in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. That includes you. And hey, see these? That includes me. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And like I said, with those uh, adherents of the antinomianist doctrine, um, you you barely just scratch those people, and they come. I'm better than so and so. The uh, the uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, I believe he's in heaven waiting for us. Uh, as is Nebuchadnezzar, as is King Manasseh, and then these these guys they always give them always. It's like, well, you think. I, I, you think they're saved and I'm lost? I'm better than that. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> hey, roll up another one, man. <laughs> go right ahead. Okay. Your God loves you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, whatever. <clears throat> There's none that doeth good. No, not one. Verse 4. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. See, because the doctrine of antinomianism that has crept in to all, all the denominations of Christianity. It is the bridge of ecumenicalism, not only for these Christians to all come together under that man of sin, the son of perdition, but also other faiths. You know, Buddhists believe in Jesus. There are Hindus that believe in Jesus. There are Taoists, Shintoists that believe in Jesus. Okay? Muslims believe in Jesus. Okay? And like we've talked about in another video, it's like, they don't, it's what they leave out. They go, well, do you believe in Jesus? Well, Jesus was a real guy. Do you believe he died on a cross for your sins? Well, no, but he, he did die on a cross. Okay, you believe that? Yeah, you're saved! That's how antinomianism works. That's how that doctrine works and makes all kinds of false converts who justify sin. That's how it works. Okay? There were they in great fear where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame because God hath despised them. I, you know, that's one thing. I, I believe that despise is worse than hatred. I really do. I really do. That's what, you know, I, I remember, I, I'm not sitting here hating on you. Bam! Bam! <laughs> I despise you. I don't hate you. Uh, that's worse than hatred. That's, that's what I believe, okay? Oh, that salvation. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion, when God bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, and Israel shall be glad. Look at that, uh, verse 5. There were they in great fear where no fear was. Hmm. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10, 24. Proverbs 10, 24. Just one verse. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Let's read 23 and 24, Proverbs 10. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, 23. It is... Uh, let's go with it. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief. Sport. Entertainment. Competition. Right? And we just saw what a fool was, is, okay? <laughs> but a man of understanding, departing from evil, has wisdom, the fear of the Lord. <laughs> oh, and uh, you know about uh, fear or love and whatnot, that will link in the description box for you, okay? The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. But the desire of the righteous, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Now remember in Proverbs 18, 
through desire a man having separated himself into uh, seeketh and intermiddleth with all wisdom okay and what was the desire that his heart may discover itself but the desire of the righteous is what thou O Lord and see the doctrine of antinomianism comes into your little stupid Christianity and says me O Lord me 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 okay all right. Now, uh, where, where, where am I at here? Where am I at? <laughs> uh, Ezekiel. I know what we we'll, we'll skip that. We'll skip that. We'll skip that. We don't need to look at that. Psalm one sixteen. Psalm one sixteen. That happens a lot. I'll write something down, then I'll be I'll skip it, because uh, I'm not the boss. Okay? Psalm 116. Verses 1 on to verse 8. We're going to read the whole thing, but I love the Lord, because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. There's that thing about call. More on that in a minute. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the paths of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Different dispensation. Under the law, it was faith and works. It was not by grace through faith. Okay? Lord Jesus Christ hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet and shed his blood on the cross. And they were not looking forward to the cross because they didn't know about it. Okay? Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. This, dear saint, prayer of Manasseh does not count because prayer of Manasseh is not scripture, Catholic. It's good, but it ain't scripture. It was obviously written... A.D. and trying to pass off just like that stupid Septuagint that it was B.C. No, it's A.D. Anyway, Psalm 51, 7 on to 17. Purge me. This is the closest, the closest that you will get in Scripture to a sinner's prayer. This is the closest. Okay? Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. We have a God that gets angry. Yes, yes. But the antinomianist doctrine doesn't. Okay? Except for those who believe on the true Christ. Okay? Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquity. Uh, David's hatred for his sin. Look at that verse. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquity. The doctrine of antinomianism. Hey! Sin! The more you sin, the more grace you have. We're not under any law, especially the morality thereof. So go ahead. Yeah, we'll sin because we're not under the law. We're under grace. It's not the grace of God that these guys are offering you people. Okay? <laughs> but this right here, that shows you the hatred that David has for his sins. Okay? Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. The Lord broke his bones. Okay, this is during the thing uh, with Bathsheba. And, you, you know, we, we, we don't have record that a bone was broken of David. But the point is the breaking, breaking, brokenness. And it's like, Lord, like Peter, like, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Don't, I mean, don't <laughs> hide your face from what I've done. 
See, David hated his sin. The antinomianist doctrine teaches you freedom from God, offers you freedom from God, so you can love your sin. And see, they, they worm it in. It's like, hey, the more you sin, the more grace abounds. So in essence, that Catholic word, teaching you to love your sin. Well, the more I sin, the more, God, the more grace I get. So of course I'm going to love sin. That's how that works. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Ah. Dispensational difference here. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy lowercase s spirit from me. It's a lowercase s because it is one that was imparted. Remember, under the law from whence this came, eternal security was not there. The death, burial, and resurrection, the blood shed on the cross was not there. Permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit, was not there. The Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident under the law. Wasn't. Neither was it in the Garden of Eden, the patriarchal period, or under the law. Okay? That's specific for this dispensation and for the 144,000 Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? So, dispensational difference. In verse, where, where, where was that? Um, verse 11. Cast not away, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy lowercase s, one that is imparted, spirit from me, not the Lord himself. See, because today you go the way of the cross, the elected way of the cross, which starts with death of self, death of your self-righteousness, brokenness. Then contrition, not going well, it was her fault or their fault, and fear, having the hell scared out of you. And see, in that one fell swoop, you can't wait. Save me. And see, these people have never been the way of the cross and never been broken because they are the greater calling on the lesser because they save themselves by their own belief. That's how this works for them. Okay? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from my blood guiltness, O God. Thou God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. David wasn't pulling a saw and like some of you people do. Well, if you've been through what I've been through, <laughs> you do, no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. If I were a lost man, maybe. But as a saint, no. No, we, no, 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 no. No. See, David wasn't pointing the finger at anyone else. He was pointing at himself. Contrition. Okay? Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. Thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. Sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Thou wilt not despise. And see, that's a requirement for salvation. You're not good. You can't save yourself. Okay? There was no good reason why God died for you. But God so loved, past tense, that he gave, past tense, okay? John 3.16, people is not the gospel. Okay? Now go back to Psalm 116, 9 and 10. I will walk before the Lord 
in the land of the living. I believe, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. And see, antinomianists, and you see this personified in that jerk Tom and his praise that he is in channel, okay? <clears throat> uh, they teach you that how you walk doesn't matter because you are your own salvation, you are your own standard, you are your own God, your faith is in your actual faith, not upon the Lord Jesus Christ, um, you are your own God. So it doesn't matter how you walk, okay? Because, hey, the more you, sin, the more you sin, the more grace you have. And that's personified by these guys, especially with their profanity. Profanity. Check out the video that we did on profanity. Okay? But, 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 but. Psalm 101. Psalm 101. Okay? I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Not sinlessly perfect, okay? No one is sinlessly perfect. Perfect heart towards the Lord. Remember, David was a man who sought after God's own heart. He didn't have God's heart. Okay, <laughs> that, that chalks up there with uh, your faith isn't yours, but it's the faith of Jesus. Or you have to, <laughs> woo, <laughs> mind of Christ, that, that's stupid. Okay, <laughs> mind of Christ is the mind of a servant. Okay, anyway, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when, oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. And we just looked at Psalm 51. That's what a perfect heart is. Okay, that's a heart that belongs unto God. And see, uh, when you save yourself by your own belief and your faith is in your faith and you justify sin, uh, uh, no room for two in that heart except, uh, except for yourself. See, fool has said in his heart there is no capital G, G God, but the God that is in there is a lower G God themselves. And there's no room in the heart for two. Okay, let's continue. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Who so privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart, <laughs> will, I, will not I suffer. Because, my, excuse me, mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. He shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth not lies shall not tarry in my sight. The free gracers are liars. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. Okay? Now, let's continue in Psalm 116. Now, verse 13 and 17, we're, we're not really going, uh, uh, we are going to on 17 a little bit, but we're not going to focus on the call until after we read this. So let's continue now at verse 11 to the close. I said in my haste, all men are liars. Saints aren't supposed to be. Aren't supposed to be. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. There you go. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. The, the, see, again, the way you serve the Lord reflects him. What you believe determines how you behave. If you believe on the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, uh, that's going to determine how you behave. But when you're, you are your own God and, and believe in this one God in three persons, that demonstrates, okay? What you believe determines how you behave. And when you are your own standard, your own God, as is the uh, doctrine of the antinomianist, Free gracer, but easy believers, devil. <clears throat> okay? Uh, it shows. It shows. Okay? 
The way you serve the Lord reflects Him. Okay? It reflects Him. It reflects Him. Ah. <clears throat> uh. Uh, now I will pay my vows unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant, I am thy servant, and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. See, the way you serve the Lord reflects Him. You know, uh, Romans 12, Romans 12, wait, 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 Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, okay? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, which the doctrine of antinomianism will have you to do, okay? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And see, the antinomianist doctrine... Gives you to believe that God is okay with profanity, that God is okay with you doing all these sins, and don't worry about it. No. No, no, no. No, no. No, 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 no. No, 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 dear friend. And, and, and while we're at this, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Come on. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 unto 21. Therefore, get your pen, circle, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the, the ministry of reconciliation. And um, uh, universalists say, you know, go to certain verses and say, everyone's going to be saved. No, not everyone is going to be saved. No. No, that's not how that works. Okay? To it, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. This is one that the uh, universalists will go to. Verse 19, to say that everyone's going to be saved. Verse, uh, video on that will be in the description box about not everyone's going to be saved, okay? Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. The way you serve the Lord reflects him. And these people who are entrenched in this uh, antinomianist doctrine, this Roman Catholic ecumenical doctrine, are representing Satan, not the true Christ who is, Okay? We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? They don't like that. They don't get that. And now, looking back at Psalm 116, verse 17 again, I will offer unto thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and will call upon the name of the Lord. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. See, when you come to the Lord broken, contrite, and in fear of Him, that's a fell swoop moment. You can't wait to call upon the Lord. And see, someone who disputes that has never been the way of the cross. They're not saved. Why? Because they don't want God telling them what to do, number one, but they are their own standard. They can do better. That's, that's the mindset. Okay? And see, when you go the way of the cross, broken and contrite and in fear of Him, you can't wait to call upon Him. Lord, save me. He saves you and seals you. Then begins your life of sanctification. We make, hi, you see this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we make mistakes all the time. Yes, we do. Okay? But, but, Thanksgiving, we saints, have something truly to be thankful for, for the Lord himself. And see, 
the antinomianists will say, well, just all you got to do is uh, thank the Lord for saving me. And they weren't broken. They have no contrition. They have no fear of the Lord. And hey, prayers of work. Calling on the name of the Lord's work. Repentance is work. And it... <laughs> See, it's what those guys leave out that make it so dangerous. But Psalm 107, 16 under 22. And we saints, we had, you know, <laughs> 16 under 22. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. You know, Leviathan, Satan, the references in uh, Job, uh, what is that, 40, 40 or 41, something like that, where um, his flakes, the skin, his his scales are so close together that no air can get between them. Okay? Hard-hearted. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Again, pointing to brokenness. Okay? And, you know, when you're self-righteous, thinking you're a good person, not uh, not as bad as so-and-so, and that you can save yourself, which antinomianist doctrine through all the daughters of the whore, you know, Christianity offers you, okay? Fools, those who say in their heart there is no God, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. Ah. And they draw near unto the gates of death. Hmm. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. Now remember, dispensational difference. Eternal security wasn't there. The permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, our God, our Father, Jesus Christ, was not there. The death, burial, and resurrection didn't happen. Bloodshed on the cross for the remission of sins did not happen. The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. Okay? Got to remember that. Okay? Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word, and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. Boasting the Lord through yourself. What happens way too many times with these Christians, they boast themselves through the Lord. It's very subtle. But you can, I, I mean, I mean, look at some of these guys who've been there, done that, and rub the fact that they've been supposedly saved for years and years and years, and, years, and they rub it in your face. Take offense. Take a cake. I'm short, buddy. Pal. Okay? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 on the 24. Okay? 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 on the 24. Come on. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, and there is none good but God, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. And as a brother does, I, I do myself. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. Personal accountability. Which the doctrine of antinomianism, well, we're all sinners. That's why they hate Romans 1 and 2. And they hate Romans 3 up to verse 18. And after that, then they go and they like cherry pick and stuff like that. In everything, 
Give thanks. Job 2. Job 2. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Job. Perfect, perfect example there. Job chapter 2. Job 2. <clears throat> Verses 9 on to verse 10. Hmm. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Remember, Job's wife suffered the same things because they were one flesh. Uh, same things that Job did. She bore them children. You have no anything in the book of Job of him having a concubine. Not one shred of evidence to support that. So those children that died were her children as well. His livelihood was her livelihood. See, one flesh. Okay? But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In everything. Everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. Verse 11. Or verse 10. In Job 2. In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Look across the page. Verses 20 on to verse 22. In Job 1. After in one fell swoop. He lost everything. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. And fell down upon the ground and worshipped. It said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave. The Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I have heart problems. I'm doing what I can, but it's starting to get worse. I did it to myself. It's my own fault. As a lost man, like I told you, uh, the drinking, the drugs, the smoking marijuana of a bong, then smoking a cigarette, I'm reaping what I've sown. I'm forgiven. When I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. But the consequences that I did of my lost life, I'm paying for now. It's my fault. And you thank him for that? Yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because it, it reminds me of how small, how puny I am. And that without the Lord, my Father, Jesus Christ, what am I? I'm dirt regardless. See, like, I've, like we've talked about recently, there has to come a time when, if you're saying, it, there has to come a time when you stop blaming others. You know, why are you being persecuted? Is it because you are truly standing for the Lord or because you're not of the Lord anyway? And the fact that a lot of you make excuses, that will scare the hell out of you. Now I scare the hell out of you. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. Concerning you, that's what it says. But concerning you, the Lord's talking to me when I read that. <laughs> and so, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of whom I am chief. Well, we're all sinners. I, I'm the chief. Personal accountability. That's why the sleazy, believist, pond scum, fake grace, antinomianist, devil, Roman Catholic, ecumenical, Jesuit coadjutors, okay? That's why they hate Romans 1, 2, and Romans 3, up to verse 18. Because like Jesus, who is God the Father, does, takes his finger, 
and puts it on that one thing that you lack. That's why Elmer from New York called the Romans Road. He said the Romans Road is the Romans Road to hell or to damnation or whatever that idiot said. Why do they say that? Because it deals with personal accountability, which you Christians, and most, of, most of you, especially all you lost people, you don't like that. Then along comes this uh, Baptist, just believe and receive. Then along comes a Presbyterian, just believe and receive. And go on and go on and go on. Quench not the spirit, capital S. How do you quench the spirit? The Lord's like, I don't do that. I don't, don't. He said, remember, rem remember there, say, you little idiots, there's Scott, he's not holding a gun to your head. Okay, um, the Lord be like, you know, don't do that. I, I don't want you to do that. Make the right, don't do that. Don't, do I'm telling you, I'm okay, fine. Go ahead, go ahead and do it. Go ahead. And see what happens, huh? And then come crying to me, huh? That's how you quench the spirit. If we deny him, he will deny us. Not salvifically. But if we deny him, he tells us what he wants us to do. Okay, and while we're here, while we're here, okay? While we're here, Second Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also live reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. That's not talking about salvation. Prove it to you, absolutely. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. We're sealed unto the day of redemption if you go the way he selected, the way of the cross. Okay? So we can deny what he says. Salvation is not ours to lose. He cannot deny himself. But if we deny him, it's like he's telling us in Scripture, like, don't do that. I'm telling you, you keep doing it, that's how you quench the Spirit. You don't do what he says. All things are lawful for you, right, pal? Uh, Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Verses 4 on to verse 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation <laughs> be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Moderation. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And again, the peace that the antinomianist doctrine within all the daughters of Christianity, okay, which is Christianity is not the faith once delivered unto the saints, give you peace with sin, okay, and freedom from God. That's what they offer you, okay? Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on, the, on these things. And Colossians 2. <laughs> yeah, you had, to, had to come to Colossians with this. Colossians 2, 6 on the 12. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. He's not going to force you. You've got to make the right decisions. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therewith, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. And the, uh, the practitioners, the teachers, the adherents of antinomianist doctrine, the Roman Catholic ecumenical antinomianist free grace, easy believism doctrine, are just that, philosophical. Oh, Elmer from New York is a perfect example of that. Okay, he, he's a philosopher. Okay? After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, of the world, not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead 
bodily. The Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost, obviously, is the spirit. The Word made flesh. Spirit. Soul. Body. One God. Spirit. Holy Ghost. Soul. God the Father. The Word made flesh. The body. The three persons that make one God. I don't know. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay? No. <laughs> and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Look right across the page there, verse 27. In whom God would make known what is the riches of the, the glory of this mystery among you Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Circumcision made without hands, okay? Ooh, need for circumcision. Beg your pardon. Okay? In putting off the body of the sins of... And putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. <laughs> uh. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And what are we reading on to? Uh, verse 12. Uh, uh, let's read on to verse 15. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing, triumphing the, in them, over them in it. Okay? And uh, uh, going back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, okay? Quench not the Spirit, verse 19. Verse 20, despise not prophesying. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Don't go headlong running into it and justifying it, just like the antinomianist does. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And what is a person? Look at this. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. I, it, it irks me when I hear certain people say body, soul, and spirit. Why do you start with the body first when right there it says spirit, soul, and body? How could it be your carnal? That that just a little thing of mine, okay? Okay? And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also do it. Now, this thing about calling, calling, all right? The antinomianist will say things like, well, that was for the Jews, okay? That is for the Jews. And, well, what about, what, what about if they can't verbally uh, call, huh? Huh? Now, with some, that may be a legitimate question. I mean, it, it is, but... See, when their first reaction is to that, it's very telling because this is what they do. What if they can't call? Huh? And these are the same guys who call calling on the name of the Lord a work. And they're liars, of course. But see, that reflex action, that reflex action to defend themselves. Well, what if they can't call? Huh? Huh? Yeah. See, if in first uh, interaction, when someone does, like, you know, well, God knows my heart. Uh, what, what, what if they can't call? What if they don't have a voice, huh? That's a mind set on self-justification. That's a mind that wants to be their own God and doesn't want God telling them what to do. Okay? I've, I've run into way too many of these guys. Okay? That's resident in them all. And especially, well, what if they can't call? 
I called on the name of the Lord a thousand times. You know why that didn't work for you? Because you didn't come the way he elected, the way he prescribed. Broken of yours. You know what? Did, did you guys get some kind of brokenness in the fact that you got caught and not that you actually committed the offense? Oh, and you see, and with these free grace are idiots. You see this all the time. It's humorous when devils are trying to uh, refute each other just for uh, suspension of disbelief. So people see that. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, but they're definitely, you know, playing back and forth. It's, a, it's pageantry, okay? <laughs> it's pageantry to them. But see, they're, they're sorrowful in that they got caught, not that they actually committed the, the offense. Hence, not truly broken. So when I called in the name of the Lord a thousand times, you were never broken. You were never broken. And to that specific individual in a live stream with three, un, uh, three individuals, and one of them unfortunately was the inerrantist, unfortunately, uh, they coached him to call on the name of the Lord when he never was broken in his heart. Never. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So, calling. Calling. And, and people, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, dude. I'm telling you. Someone who is going to refute. You know, I, I, right away, I always think of that, 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 that lovely talk show host in Canada. You know, prayer, prayers of work, all that. that why do you say that? Because you've never been broken. You're the greater. God is the lesser to you. That's why they say that. Never been broken of their self-righteousness. Like I said, you can scratch these guys, okay? And, well, I'm better than so-and-so. <laughs> there you go. But, <coughs> Genesis 4, 25 on the 26. And Adam, this is after the Garden of Eden. This is now the patriarchal period when God was going to call Abraham, then Isaac, and then Jacob to establish the Hebraic line from whence Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? The, the Garden of Eden was all works. They saw God, and because they saw God, didn't need faith. Read Hebrews 11 verse 1, okay? They saw God, they didn't need faith, uh, that they, they were given a work to do. Don't eat of that tree. That's a work. Okay, it was not by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Okay, just, just have to rant on that. Because these guys say it's from, by grace through faith from beginning to end. And they, they even tell you that it's by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. Okay. <laughs> okay, but this is after the Garden of Eden. Sin is in the world. This is the patriarchal period. Similar to this dispensation, but different in what ways? No death, burial, and resurrections, bloodshed on the cross, permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, you know. And also, there was an element of required action. What happened if, uh, if Noah didn't uh, build his ark? What happened if uh, Abraham just sat there and didn't go like it was told to? Similar to today, but very different. Okay? And again, people. 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 You'll hear from some of these idiots that rightly dividing, and they claim to be dispensational. Listen to me. Salvation changes. God doesn't change, but how he deals with man, mankind, that's what changes. God's grace is their unmerited favor in every dispensation. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be here. And these devils are the ones that tell you that his grace changes in the dispensation. Thus, thus they, they twist what it means to actually rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Salvation changes within the dispensation. Okay? God does not change. How he deals with us, that is what changes. His grace doesn't, because if the, his grace wasn't there, we'd all go up like a tinderbox. Okay? Okay? All right? So, and Adam knew his wife again, 
and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. There it is, right there, in Genesis chapter 4. Okay? Genesis after four, uh, chapter 4, after the dispensation of the Garden of Eden, which was all works, into the dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? Then came upon, then began man to call upon the name of the Lord. Okay? So, dispensation of the patriarchs. Okay? Well, there is an Old Testament connotation. It crosses dispensational lines. But, okay, let's go with this. 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18. See, someone going to refute calling upon the name of the Lord. Uh, they've never been broken. But then again, there are those who can... <clears throat> Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. They can say these things, but in their heart, whom God knows their heart, remember, they've never been broken because they've never been to the cross or to the actual Jesus who is. More on that in a little bit. Uh, 1 Kings 18, beginning at 21, on to verse 24. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long, how long, how, how long halt ye between two opinions? Two opinions, two wisdoms. One that is earthly, sensual, devilish. One that is first pure, peaceable, uh, with good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. I just bradized that. But how long halt ye between two opinions? To God's little G and the God who is. If the Lord be God, follow him. And if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Either or. There's no gray area. You're either saved or you're lost. And if you're not saved, your father is the devil. Okay? Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods. Plural. No, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Your gods. Look at verse 21. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Singular. Singular. You know, like the golden calf. But those are our gods. Okay, the Trinity is... Uh, uh, yeah. The Trinity is satanic. Okay, to hell with your Trinity. But, okay, verse 24, And call ye on the name of your gods. But they only call on one name, Baal. But equated as gods. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's continue. And I will call on the name singular of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Uh, um, look at verse 26. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal, a singular name, from morning unto noon even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us! But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leapt upon the altar which was made. Cut themselves with lance, that's 
And Elijah mocked him. He's like, hey, he's in a journey or whatever. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting, huh? And of course, you got to remember something about this. The Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? This was under the law. Faith and works. Eternal security was not there. The blood shed on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection wasn't there. Okay? The permanent indwelling of the Lord. The Holy Ghost. You know, the Lord is that spirit, God our Father. You know, that's the seal until the day of redemption. Wasn't there. Okay? It was by faith and works. All right? And the Jews require a sign. Got to remember that. Okay? Got to remember that. 2 Kings 5. 2 Kings 5 now. 2 Kings 5, verses 8 on to verse 14. Second Kings 5, verses 8 on to verse 14. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him, Naman, come, let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman, Naaman, Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. So Naaman was looking for a dramatic shoe, such as the leper, the guys uh, leaping on the altar, making a public shoe. That's the thing, huh? Huh? It's like, ah, I thought he would call on the name of the Lord, you know, that kind of thing. We, we looked at this specifically for call. But now look, now look at this. Are not uh, Abana and Par, Far Par rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Okay? And his servants came near and said unto him, and said, Master, and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. Remember, this is under the law. This is a work that he did to be clean. Okay? Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. We looked at this specifically because we wanted to cover this, call on the name of the Lord, okay? And see, Naaman was expecting him to, oh, Jesus, Jesus, and of course, uh, the name of Jesus was not revealed to them at that time, of course, but he was expecting the, oh, you know, the dramatic, where some of these people... Who can, you know, Jesus Christ is come and our flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Can do that for the suspension of disbelief. The facade, the shoe. But not of a brokenness. See? See? Just because you can say something. Doesn't mean that you is what you say you is. Okay? It is an issue of the heart. And see, that's why the devils avoid, hate the cross. Because it's death to self. That's why they don't like it. Okay? That's why they hate it. Zephaniah 3. Zephaniah 3. We're, we're avoiding Joel for the moment because then i got to get the other set of scriptures because that's the one that these guys cling to. That's the one that they cling to. And they say, see, it's, it's, it's for the Jews. Mm. Zephaniah 3, verses 8 on the 13. <clears throat> Zephaniah 
uh, uh, 8 on the verse 12, excuse me. Therefore, will, therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Fire of his jealousy. You know, uh, when Gog and Magog and stuff like that, the fire of his jealousy, you know, destroy it. Okay? Gog and Magog, by the way, happen after the thousand year reign of Christ, not before it. Okay? Get out of there. All right? Excuse me. But, okay. For then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Serve him with one consent. Call upon the name of the Lord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. I'm saved because I just believe, yes. And thou shalt no more be haughty, because of, my holy, uh, because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. They shall trust in the name of the Lord. Now, go to Joel. Here's where the guys, these idiots, really like to hu uh, hunker down on this and say, see, it's for the Jews. See, it's for the Jews. And they say it's like a, not a contradiction, but see, it's, it's for the Jews. And they go to Acts Chapter 2. Okay? So, Joel, chapter 2, 28 on 32, and Acts 16, 21. Okay? Joel, chapter 2. This is 28 on 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Uh, Acts chat. Uh, well, that's. I, <laughs> this one was supposed to be Acts. I had this one open up to Joel. <laughs> Excuse me. Give me a second. Acts chapter two, verse sixteen. Okay, we're gonna uh, side by side here. I'm doing this. Okay. Acts uh, twelve sixteen. Acts two, sixteen, on the twenty one. But this is what this but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my capital S spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Meaning in Acts 17. Pour out my spirit upon all flesh, meaning that it's available because of the death, burial, and resurrection. But when you look at uh, Joel 2.28, look at it. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my lowercase s spirit upon all flesh. So lowercase s there is one that is imparted. Capital S, uh, uh, capital S spirit, as in Acts 17 here, Acts 2, verse 17, what's the difference? The death, burial, and resurrection happened. The permanent indwelling of the Lord himself, the Holy Ghost, our Father Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit, is now available. Whereas in Joel, it wasn't. Okay? But see, here's the thing. The principle of calling, the lesser calling on the greater, remains the same. What's the difference is the different dispensation. And see, when these guys tell you that they rightly divide the word of truth, but what distinguishes the dispensation is a difference in God's grace. No, 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 no. See, what determines the difference in the dispensation is salvation. Salvation changes within the dispensation. Okay? So see, in Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, you, if you got two of these, get them. But get, you know, get your, whatever you got to do, look at these two verses. Okay? 
And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my lowercase s spirit upon all flesh, one that is imparted. Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my capital S, the Lord himself, the Holy Ghost. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Upon all flesh. Everybody's going to be... No, that means that it's available. The way of the cross. Okay? That's what that means. All right? And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. And your sons... And, uh, Acts 2, 17. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Okay, verse 29 in Joel 2. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my lowercase s spirit, Acts chapter 2, verse 18, and on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days my capital S spirit, and they shall prophesy. See, now prophesying under the Old Testament is different than prophesying today. Pro uh, this is prophesying today. God the Father dwells within me. I'm speaking to you his word. This is speaking the word of the Lord. The given by inspiration word of God. The authorized version. This is prophesying today. Prophesying under the Old Testament. Under the law. Was re uh, being revealed as he was revealing it. Okay. That's the difference. But note there sugar britches. To you scum antinomianist. Capital S spirit. Lowercase spirit. In verse 29 in Joel 2, and in verse 18, Acts chapter 2, okay? One is lowercase and one is uppercase. What does that mean? That's showing you the difference in the dispensations. Okay? Calling upon the name of the Lord crosses dispensational lines. We saw it in the patriarchal period. Genesis 4, that was the patriarchal period there, you heretic. Yes, it was. Under the law, right there. Okay? Right there. And in this dispensation, right here. Okay? And remember, under the law, which was faith and works, eternal security was not there. The death, burial, and resurrection didn't happen. The bloodshed on the cross, the permanent indwelling of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, wasn't there permanently. Under the law, the spirit can come, go, come, go. Today, you go the way of the cross, broken of your self-righteousness. Contrite, take your responsibility, not blaming others. Have the health scared out of you. You, the lesser, can't wait to call on the greater. Okay? People, you, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? That's the difference. And see, these guys who claim to be dispensational, but they're not dispensational. They come to this and say, well, see, it's for the Jews, but yet they tell you that, you know, rightly dividing means that God's grace changes. No, it's salvation. Okay? It's not, it's not for the Jews only. No, it's for us today. Oh, don't worry, we'll get about, well, what if they can't call? That's their go-to, to to defend themselves. And see, someone who has never been broken wants to justify themselves, who want their sin. That's the type of mind that does that. Okay? Now let's continue. Verse 30. And I will shoot wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Acts chapter 2, verse 19. And I will shoot wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Um, verse 31. In um, Joel 2, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. Verse 20 in Acts 2, the sun shall be darkened, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Question. Okay. You know, John Hagee and the blood moon. I think it was last night we had a ty type of a blood moon, but not really. But anyway, Lord, come. 
This is in Joel, that's before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Acts chapter 2 is after the death, burial, and resurrection, this dispensation. See, it crosses dispensational lines. Okay? It's lowercase s in Joel because death, burial, and resurrection, the blood, and the permanent indwelling wasn't there. But see, calling upon the name of the Lord crosses dispensational lines. After the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood on the cross, and uh, permanent indwelling, Acts chapter 2, it's a uppercase S, the Lord himself. Yeah. Don't, don't fall for this. Well, capitalization of the spirit doesn't, is really doesn't. Oh, it's very important. Especially when you're uh, getting involved in something like this. Okay? Now let's continue. Here's the big one. Here's the big one that these guys point to. Now remember, under the law, eternal security was not there. The permanent indwelling of the Lord, our Father, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Eternal security wasn't there under the law as it is today. Okay? So, and this is what these guys point to. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Ah! 21 in Acts chapter 2. And whosoever shall, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And see, these antinomianist idiots come to this, it's like, see, it's for the Jews. It's for the Jews. Uh, no. Well, yes, it, yes. Under the law, yes. But see, it crosses dispensational lines. Under the law, it says delivered. Yeah, because there was no eternal security there. There was no eternal security under the law. Okay? There was none. Eternal security is the permanent indwelling of God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, within the believer. That is what eternal security is. The Lord himself. Under the law, that was not there. So that means that he would have to deliver them again. In this dispensation, we go the way of the cross. He seals us. We're once saved, always saved. Okay? Okay? The Lord rebuke you, you vile, vomitous, antinomianist, free grace, easy believism, wicked devil heretics. See, you're, not, you're counting on people not actually searching the scriptures, and that's how you're getting away with deceiving people like this. It's, it crosses dispensational lines. Okay? It's viable for us today. It's not a work. It's not a work. And see, you reveal your lost state when you immediately refer... Well, well, well it's a work. Right? What if they can't call on the name of... We're going to get to that next, okay? Well, let's finish verse 32 in Joel 2. And, who's, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. So, calling on the name of the Lord, we see it in the patriarchal period, we also see it in under the law, and we also see it for today. Okay? All right? And remember, under the patriarchal period, there was no what? Death, burial, and resurrection, blood, shed on the cross, no permanent indwelling of the Lord himself, the Holy Ghost. Okay? Under the law, same thing. They would have to be constantly delivered because eternal security wasn't there. So, so it is, number one, it is not a contradiction. Number two, it is not just relegated to the Jew. It crosses dispensation lines. With that, Romans 10, and this is why they refute that. And even Jake the Jerk in his little book, uh, he gave him credit on that. 
He did a good job about Romans 10, okay? That little jerk who's lost. And owes quite a few people an apology, but he's, uh, he's in his pride and he's got his nose. Uh, never mind, but never mind about that little lost devil. Anyway, uh, Romans 10, verses 1, on to 14. See, they do that whole thing trying to say, well, it's for the Jews. And then these guys come to Romans 9, uh, 9 10, and 11 and say that, uh, well, Paul was written for writing for doctrine um, during the time of Jacob's trouble. Where does it say in the uh, book of Revelation where they call on the name of the Lord to be saved or delivered? Why isn't that in there? Romans 9, 10, and 11 is doctrine for us today, just like 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12. And see, someone who tries to divide up Paul's doctrine for us today in this dispensation and say that he would, that, that, that's, that's bad. Okay? That's heresy. But, Romans 10. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized, identified unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the, the same spiritual meat, and did drink, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. I'm in First uh, Corinthians. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. You were like, Brad. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Brethren. <laughs> Romans 10. <laughs> See, that's why you want to follow me along. Romans 10, 1 on verse 14. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. God's righteousness. And see, when you skip over brokenness, contrition, and fear, and call calling on the name of the Lord a work, see, that calling upon the name of the Lord after you've been after you've been broken contrition and fear what more shoe of humility than the lesser calling on the greater so when you overstep that you're the greater calling on the lesser see how that works for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness oh I I, I I've been confirmed I had the cookie I just believe and receive their own righteousness. They're ignorant of God's righteousness because they've never been broken. They are the better, and God is the lesser to them. Okay? Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They don't want God telling them what to do. And they want to dictate their own course. They are their own gods and they don't want God telling them what to do. That's why they say, well, we're not under the law, we're under grace. And they're against even the morality of the law. The morality. Never mind the, the salvific thing which is not for us today, but the morality of it. Demonstrated by names that I've already mentioned and I'm not going to. Okay? For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. The Catholic. Okay, now this is talking about the actual law itself, but Catholicism gives you a law. They got a whole book on it. Okay, well, I've been confirmed, I've done this, I've done this. Their own righteousness. The free grace antinomianist palm, palm scum, easy believers. I just believe and receive. The Calvinist, or the black Hebrew Israelite, I'm elect. Or I'm elect because of my skin color. Go on and on. Okay? For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say, wise, say not in thine heart, who hath ascended into heaven? Ah, meaning, well, you think you're your own God? That is to bring Christ down from above. As like, as like the Jesuit priest with his, you know, abracadabra, hocus pocus, woody, woody, woody. And they raised the bale cookie, baal cookie, the sun, okay? Or, 
Who shall descend from the deep? That is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, unlike what the antinomianist tells you there is. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And we just debunked their stupid little thing about trying to say, well, calling is just for the Jews, or it's a, it's a work. No, it's not. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. And we just went over with Joel and Acts the differences in the dispensation. Okay? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I called on the name of the Lord. Stop that. Okay? What was the problem? Oh, yeah, he believed in his heart that he was righteous, didn't he? But yet, he was never truly broken. Oh, and we got to add 14. Because he, well, they never, you know, they, they never deal with verse 14. Which is so stupid. And these guys, they focus in on the word believe. They strain at a net and swallow the camel. Look at the verse. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? It says believe. Right. But what is this talking about? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? See, Romans 10, 14 on to verse 17 is addressing those of us who preach the word. Okay? That's what that's talking about. These guys focus in on believe right there, and they go off on their little tangent about just, but no, this is talking about those who are sent to preach the word. That's what that's talking about. Okay? Okay, sugar britches? Okay? All right? Now, what happens to all of a Okay, Brad, anyone calls on the name of the Lord? But what about, well, I called on the name of the Lord a thousand times, and... Well, why, what happened? What's Okay, says that, right? That's true. But see, it is an issue of the heart. Brad, we, we already looked in uh, when we read in uh, Proverbs 18, uh, verse 2, about how deceptive the heart is. But a pure heart, what is a pure heart in the eyes of God? A broken and contrite heart as we looked in uh, Psalm 51. And see, there are those out there who will, who will do what that says, but yet they haven't been broken in their heart. See, that's like what that guy I'm mocking. Um, that's his plight. He called on the name of the Lord a thousand times. But in heart he was never broken. And he would, as a dark implant, he will hide, well, I have a disability. No, you, you do have a disability. Sure you do. But you know exactly what you're doing. And you know what you're doing is wrong. You're, you're, of, you're of your father, the devil. Okay? And you, when you're caught or called on it, you hide behind your disability. Okay? Dark implant. See, brokenness. Brokenness. The most hated part of Romans 3 that antinomianist doctrine hates. As it is written, verses 10 on verse 18, they hate this. Why? Because of that. Puts its finger on that, what you lack. Okay? So, I mean, and these guys will have you to believe that anyone, like for example... Perfect example. Dave Murphy, that crazy uh, uh, self-theist, he's not an atheist, they would say, well, if he calls on the name of the Lord, uh, then he'd be saved. But 
he's publicly said that he doesn't want God and that, you know, he wants his sin. But see, someone said, well, just verbalizing it, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Uh, okay, you can say that, but that doesn't prove you're saved. Just to utter it by itself without a broken, contrite heart. See, that's what, that's what was missing in that dear little Australian. I called on the name of the Lord a thousand times. You weren't broken. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Brokenness. Contrition. Fear of the Lord will break you. You're not... Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. I, 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 Romans 3. Huh, Romans 3. Getting ahead of myself here, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, you'd like not to hear that, wouldn't you? You antinomianist pond scum. Okay, you would. You don't like that. You know why? Because it deals with yourself personally. That's why they hate it. That's why they... That's why Elmer from New York... That's why Elmer from New York calls the Romans road the road to hell. Because they... they come on. It deals with self. It deals with your self-righteousness. And that's what they hate. Romans 3, as it is written, verses 10 on verse 18, they hate this. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Antinomianist avoids this. Well, we're all sinners. But then again, well, I believe Jeffrey Dahmer's in heaven and you, I don't believe you're saved. I'm better than they are. You think they're saved and I'm not. I'm better than they are, see? We're all sinners. They hide under the umbrella. Well, we're all sinners. That is true. We're all sinners. But what becomes before that is acknowledging that you, you are not good. You cannot save yourself. There's nothing good in you. You are not righteous. Okay? Okay? They're all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. God go to Christ's church that he founded. Believe and receive. I'm elect, I'm saved because of my skin color or whatever. Okay? The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. <laughs> Profanity, yeah. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. They say peace, peace, but there is no peace. The peace they offer you is a peace with sin. Why? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He made all of this, okay? For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it in the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He, now dispensational difference, remember this was written under the law, but instruction and righteousness, check this out. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. But Brad, are, but, okay, what this... What establishes in the sight of God a pure heart? Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Vanity. Sworn deceitfully. You've called on the name of the Lord a thousand times. But, see, your heart isn't pure. Why? Because it wasn't made pure by having it being refined to get the dross out of it. It's your self-righteousness. That's why these guys hate Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse 18. Because it deals with the personal accountability and responsibility for what you did. And that you're no good. And they overskip that and just believe and receive. And see, well, I've called on the name of the Lord a thousand times. But you never were broken. 
you lifted up your soul on the vanity and you've sworn deceitfully because you were never broken. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Yeah, uh, the Lord is the door. Okay, Jesus Christ, he is the door. Watch out for people who still to this day have that little insignia, boot the door. The genius there. Okay? <laughs> lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Well, okay, it says, call on the name of the Lord. I've called on the name of the Lord. Did you go the way of the cross? Were you broken of your self-righteousness? That you're a good person and that you can save yourself? See, you overskipped that. It's like, okay, well, I called on the name of the Lord. I'm saved then, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Were you truly broken? Were you truly broken? Were you broken because you did it? Or were you sorry that you got caught? That's why that little guy, I called on the name of the Lord. That's why. Why? Because he was never broken. And then along comes antinomianism. Just believe and receive. Puffing yourself up. Overpassing brokenness. Why? You are your own God. 1 Timothy 1, verses 1 on verse 7. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, Jesus Christ our Lord, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge them some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity, self-sacrifice, out of a pure heart. But the heart is deceitful. Yes, it is. What purifies the heart? Being broken. Okay? Being contrite and having the hell scared out of you. That is a purification of the heart. And of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved have turned aside, uh, aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Look across the page, verse 15. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Second Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2, 15 on to 23. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Salvation is what changes in the dispensations. Rightly dividing the two parts of the uh, video will be in the description box for you. Okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Antinomianism. 
And their word will eat as doth the canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have heard, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. There are some out there who preach and teach that we are in the kingdom of heaven today. Yeah. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Not go headlong towards it. But in a great, great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Okay? Some of you saints who refuse to do what's right, and the Lord hasn't killed you yet, you're possibly alive to be uh, as a bad example. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts. You need to grow up. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, self-sacrifice, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. What is a pure heart according to the Lord? We've already shown that the heart is wicked, deceitful above all things, and that if you trust in your heart, you are a fool. So what is a pure heart according to God? One that has been broken. One that has contrition. One that has the fear of the Lord. One that takes responsibility and accountability instead of, oh, it's her fault. Or, yeah, it's her fault. Well, it's your fault, but her fault, but okay, yeah, I did it too. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. That's what they like to avoid. what they like to avoid. And let's read verse 23. But foolish behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God and unlearned questions oh, refusing to rightly divide the word of truth. Avoid. Knowing that they do gender strifes. And, 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 and what, what did we read? What did we read in James about? Uh, what did we read in James at the beginning of this video? In chapter 3? Um, where was that? Uh, in James. What was that? James 3? <laughs> Verse 14. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, Glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and foolish. Oh, and 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18, on to verse 25. For as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition of the fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Hey, hey, Jake the jerk, come here, listen, okay? The reason why the sinful flesh of Jesus Christ was sanctified was because, number one, he did what no man could do. He kept the law perfectly. And remember, he was circumcised the eighth day. And there was a sacrifice made for that, as according to the law. Jesus Christ, God the Father, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Okay, you read about this in Romans 8 and also in Galatians, how he was made of woman, made under the law. Okay, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus, God the Father, never sinned. Hence, Jake the Jerk, okay, hence that flesh was sanctified by Jesus keeping the law perfectly and never sinning. That's why. Okay, can you get that, you little idiot? 
Okay? Okay? <laughs> Your God loves you there, kid. Okay, let's continue. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Seeing ye have purified your souls by obeying the truth through the capitalist spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Fervently. Excuse me. Excuse me. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the lowercase w, word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Okay? Okay? See, a pure heart is one that is a broken heart. And unless your heart has been broken, unless you have contrition, taking accountability and responsibility, and have the hell scared out of you, you see, in that process, which happens in one fell swoop, the lesser you can't wait. Lord, save me, the greater. That's how that works. Psalm 119, dross. Our dross is self-righteousness, which is why brokenness, okay? That you're a good person, that you can do something to save you, you can't. Again, that's why they avoid Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse 18. That's why they start after Romans 3, 18. Okay? But Psalm 119, Samach. And I'll tell you uh, verses 113 on to verse 120. Okay? Samach. Verses 113 on to verse 120. See, the dross in the heart is our self-righteousness. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Amen. But see, being broken of our self-righteousness is a requirement. And a pure heart is a heart that has been broken, that is, in, that is contrite, and that fears the Lord. And see, when you say brokenness is a work, uh, contrition is a work, Fear the Lord is a work. Calling on the name of the Lord is a work. See, you're overpassing those required things and just going to believe and receive. And see, if you don't have those to begin with and just call a thousand times on the name of the Lord, well, you were never broken. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live. And let me not be ashamed of my hope. And who is our hope? Remember, this was written on the law. This is instruction in righteousness. Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe. And I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimonies. My flesh trembleth of fear of thee, for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25. The dross in us is that self-righteousness. We can't do anything about our sins. We can't repent of our sins and then come to the Lord. You can repent of your sins if you tried. The repenting that we do is of our self-righteousness. The Lord is the one who washed his blood, 
our, the Lord is the one who washes away our sins in his blood by the death, burial, and resurrection. Our repenting is of our self-righteousness. That is the dross that has to be dealt with that the antinomianist doctrine doesn't deal with. Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25, 200, verse 7. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The heaven for height and the earth for depth, and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. I will sit no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. Hmm. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king, and stand not in the place of great men. For better it is that it be said unto thee, Come up hither, than that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. Meaning, don't exalt yourself. Humble yourself. And how do you humble yourself when you just believe and receive and you save yourself by your own belief? How do you humble yourself when you trust in the cookie or in the wine or in that you're elect because of your skin color or something like that? No, that's all reflection of the idol you. Proverbs 26, 21 on to 28. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. Contentious man. Prayer's work, calling on the name of the Lord is work. Repentance is work. It's actually going from unbelief to belief. Uh, thou believest there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. Okay? The words of a talebearer are as wounds. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Romans 16. Romans 16. Romans 16. Uh, no, that's not the one. Um, oh, yeah, it is. Romans 16, verses 17, on to verse 19. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Stay away from antinomianists, free gracers. They're liars. They're devils. They offer you another Jesus and another gospel. The freedom they offer you is freedom from God, and the grace is the grace of the devil. Okay? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good. And simple concerning evil. Go back to Proverbs 26. Okay. Verse 23. Burning lips and a wicked heart. Are like a pot shared covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. That's hatred. That is true hatred. When he speaketh fair, believe him not. Oh, God loves you. God's not angry at you. For there are seven abominations in his heart. Because his heart hasn't been broken. Whose hatred is covered by deceit. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe and receive. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. Yeah, with their profanity, pretty much. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. And he that rolleth a stone, it will return, return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it. And a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Right there. 
lying tongue. Hateth those that are afflicted by it. It is pure hatred, dear person, spiritual and body, to say to you, God loves you unconditionally and God's not angry at you. You reject Christ, the true God, the true gospel. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. And God's love is to be had at the cross, but you've got to go the way that he has elected. See, these guys are preaching to you hatred. When we as saints, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, we're preaching to you the true, the true Christ and the true gospel. They aren't. We're, we're doing this because of fear of the Lord. We actually love you and want to see you be saved by the Lord. Those guys just want to damn you to hell after we, the body of Christ, get out of here and then they keep the just believe and receive. You take the mark in your right hand and in your forehead and you're through. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. Verses 22 unto 26. We're almost done. Isaiah 1, 22 unto 26. Thy silver is become dross, and thy wine mixed with water, adulterated, mixed. Thy princes are rebellious, and companions of thieves. And a thief is someone who boots the door and climbs up some other way. Everyone loveth gifts, the praises of men. How can ye believe that receive honor one of another and receiveth not the, and seeketh not the honor that cometh of God only? And followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord of the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah. I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. That's a future prophecy that hasn't happened yet, referring on to the time of, you know, uh, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Zion shall be redeemed with judgment and her counselors with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. That happens with the great white throne. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. And after we, the body of Christ, are taken up, and you Christians left behind, and you got these guys just believe and receive, and that's the bridge that will bridge all faiths together. You take that mark of the beast in your right hand and your forehead, you're done. You can't lop it off or gouge it out. Once you actually do that, your faith is sealed. You're going to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts. Ezekiel 22, and we will be done. Ezekiel 22, verses 17 on to 22. Ezekiel 22, verses 17 on to 22. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, the house of Israel to me has become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead. In the midst of the furnace, there are even draw, the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore, I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace, to blow the fire upon it. To melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Melt you. 
you can I, I would equate this onto being broken. This is in another dispensation, specifically onto the Hebraic Jewish people, yes. But the instruction in righteousness is, see, in order to be fixed, you got to be broken. In order to be born again, something has to die. You have to be broken in order to be fixed. Something has to die in order to be born again. Oh, shut up. Well, Paul didn't say, you're right, Paul never said born again. You're right. He just defined what it meant to be born again. It's another thing those guys will do to skirt, you know, true salvation and to make false converts. Okay? Melt. Melt you. Being broken, the Romans road, which is there. And see, that's the thing. You lost people. I can't understand the King James Version. Oh, yeah, you can. You're the, you're the college-educated guy. You know, you got a $100,000 piece of paper on your wall. You've been, you know, you're, you're an intellectual, yet you can't understand Fourth grade level English of the authorized version of the scripture? What is it, fourth grade or sixth or whatever? But you're the intellectual. No, you can understand it. You just don't want to. Verse 21. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. And ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. Uh, as silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, and this is, of course, referring, you know, references on the time of Jacob's trouble and stuff like that with the remnant and whatnot. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. Calling on the name of the Lord. It's, well, what, well, what if they can't call? Right? What if they can't call? It's, see, out of a pure heart, a broken heart. Okay? That's the thing. So, well, what if they can't call? What if they can't call? Huh? Well, if your heart is broken, you're going to call. But see, let's say for their argument, and see, that's the exception. A mute or someone who can't verbally speak, but they are broken Okay, they call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay? Well, what if they can't verbally call? Are they broken in their heart? See, that's why someone who said, well, I've called on the name of the Lord a thousand times, but yet you were never broken. But yet someone who can't because... And that's the exception. Unfortunately, some people, I, <laughs> you know, got too big of a mouth. They can, but they haven't been broken. See, the exception are the rare few are the ones that can't verbally do that. And see, they go to that and say, well, what if they can't call? They do that to justify themselves. But see, have you been broken in your heart of your self-righteousness? See, that's what's lacking in someone who says that they've called on the name of the Lord a thousand times, and yet they weren't ever saved. Why? Because they were never broken in the heart. And a broken, contrite heart that has the fear of the Lord in it is a pure heart. So what if they can't call on the name of the Lord? Number one, you're saying that just to, to justify yourself. That's the exception, but even so, okay, Scripture is plain, calling on the name of the Lord. But what if they can't call? Well, Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse 18. Brokenness? Come here. See, you're not going to get away from being broken. You're not. The way you get away from it is just believe and receive. And that's not the true gospel. That's not the true Jesus. In order to be fixed, you have to be broken. Brokenness, dear friend, is a requirement. 
and see once you are truly broken of that self-righteousness. You couldn't repent of your sins if you tried, if I held a shotgun at your children forcing you to repent of your sins. You couldn't do it. No, the, the repentance is, I'm not as bad as they are. I've been confirmed. I just believed and received. The woman you gave me to be with, that's the repentance. You understand? That is going to be it for this video. Please consider these things. Please. It's time for you to wake up from your sleep. Come, let us reason together, you and I. Shall we? Thank you, brethren, for watching this if you do. I love you. Please keep us in your prayers. Like I said, I'm, I'm doing my best to eat healthy and to do what I can, but um, it's getting worse. So, thank you, brethren. I love you. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.